Welcome back everyone and in this video we're going over some stocks that may be considered cheap at their current price point. These are some companies that trade with very low price to earnings ratios and provide a ton of value to investors. And for each of the companies in today's video we're going to take a look at their current share price, the estimated fair value for the company and a lot of these stocks in today's video are actually trading below the estimated fair value for their shares. We're going to take a look at their dividend, their dividend growth rate, and just go over some companies that may have some potential upside moving forward because of where they sit today. And with the high flying stocks we've been seeing on the market over this past year, a lot of companies trade at crazy high valuations. But all of the companies in today's video trade at a very reasonable PE ratio between 8 to 10, and these are brands that overall provide investors with some solid value, some nice dividend income, with the potential to see some upside movement in the share price down the road. If you're new to the channel, I am the Gen Z Investor and every single day we talk to the stock market, we go over different stocks you can buy and sell and discuss any major stock market news and headlines. And of course, in this video today, we're going to focus on some cheap or undervalued companies that may be a great buy at their current levels. So please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for daily videos about the stock market and we're going to jump right in to stock number one in today's video, which is Goldman Sachs. This financial giant is currently up 11% this year and trades at $256 per share. The company's market cap comes in at just below $92 billion, and of course this is a video of cheap and undervalued companies, and they trade at a forward PE right now of only 10.9, so very low forward PE on Goldman Sachs at this current level. They are a nice dividend paying company as well, yielding 1.95%, and they are currently trading at a very undervalued rate. So if we take a look at a Morningstar report, the estimated fair value for Goldman Sachs is at $312 per share. So significant upside from where we sit today in that $256 range. And if we take a look at the chart, that represents a 22% discount on the share price at this current level. And Goldman Sachs is not slowing down. They have plans to expand to offer products for more diverse populations. So we all know Goldman Sachs was really tailored toward the wealthy for many decades, but now they're actually expanding and their wealth management services, they're creating a new platform to actually serve the masses and get their services out there to a greater amount of people. And of course, the Fed made a huge announcement as of late, allowing some large financial companies to redo share buybacks. In 2020, all share buybacks were suspended, but now that is off and in 2021, Financial giants like Goldman Sachs will begin buying back a ton of shares, really raising investor value. So Goldman Sachs has already seen some nice growth in 2020 when the rest of the financial sector still sits in the red. I think this company has a lot of upside and they're currently being traded at a 22% discount of the Morningstar estimated fair value. If we take a look at some future expected growth rates, next year Goldman Sachs alone is expected to grow by over 23%. And this is a dividend paying company that currently yields 1.95%. Their payout ratio is very small, making up only 21% of their net income. So that just shows they can continue to increase their dividend down the road, plus maintain a lot of cash within the business to grow and expand. And they grow that dividend at a nice rate, averaging 13% dividend growth over the past five years. So Goldman Sachs is the first company we're taking a look at today, a very low forward PE of only 10.9% may be considered 22% undervalued from the Morningstar report and has a lot of upside potential for many years down the road. Now moving on to stock number two, we have AT&T. The company currently trades for around $28 per share and is in the red 26% over the past 12 months. This is a very large company with a market cap of $204 billion and they are well known for their extremely high dividend with a current yield at 7.25%. And if we take a look down the road, the company currently trades at a very low forward PE of only 9.07. So another company that is considered one of the best value plays on the market right now, and people love AT&T below that $30 price point. And if we take a look right now, the estimated fair value for this company sits at $35.57 per share. And taking a look at that right now compared to their current valuation, that represents AT&T trading at around a 19% discount from their estimated fair value. And this company, although they've had some bad acquisitions in the past, is really expanding and moving towards and in the right direction down the road. So if we take a look, their HBO Max subscription service has been growing at an insane rate over the past six weeks. 
their subscribers have jumped nearly 50% and now sit at over 12.6 million people as members of this paid subscription model. And their engagement has surged 36% in the past month. So over the next few years, AT&T is looking to have between 75 million and 90 million paid subscribers by 2025. And this would really help them accelerate their top line revenue growth and provide the company with a nice boost to their bottom line as well. We all know subscription-based models are taking over our economy and almost every company on the market is trying to get some type of subscription model out there for consumers. Streaming is growing in popularity, cable is somewhat of dying off, and they're trying to transition themselves into the streaming services for long-term future growth. So if we take a look right now at that dividend scorecard, you can see a massive 7.25% dividend yield. The payout ratio only makes up around 65% of their net income. They grow their dividend only 2% per year, somewhat matching inflation year over year, and they've continued to grow their dividend for 36 consecutive years, making them a dividend aristocrat. And their free cash flow payout ratio is around 60% right now, so the dividend does seem sustainable over the next few years. And we all know one of the main concerns with AT&T is the amount of debt on their balance sheet, but they have been doing a nice job of bringing that number down to a more sustainable level and have very strong plans to continue to reduce it over the next three to five years down the road. So overall, AT&T is currently being traded at an estimated 19% discount from their fair value, and the company currently sits in that $28 to $29 range and may be a great buy for a cheap or undervalued stock with a very high dividend yield at this current level. Avvi is the third company we're going to take a look at today. They currently trade for around $103 per share, and the company has grown close to 15% over the past 12 months. They have a market cap at $182 billion and a very high dividend yield, just over 5% at this current level. And again, another company with a very low Ford PE, currently trading at only 9.85, so a ton of value in this company. And although the company is currently sitting at their estimated fair value range, I believe there still is a ton of upside for many years down the road. Getting into a value play like Avvi with a 5% dividend that has some nice share price appreciation and currently trades at such a low multiple of only 9.85 forward earnings may be a nice addition for a value or cheap portfolio. If we take a look at that dividend, it only makes up around 50% of their net income and they do an amazing job of growing that payment year over year, averaging an insane 20.8% dividend growth rate over the past five years. So although you are already locking in a nice dividend when you buy in at over 5%, that dividend is compounding and growing at a significant rate year over year as well. So another company in the value space that is currently trading at a cheap valuation of only 9.85 forward PE. If we move on now, to stock number four, we have Qualcomm, ticker QCOM, currently trading around $148 per share. This company has actually seen a massive run-up in 2020 and share price has grown 67%. They have a market cap at $168 billion, a nice dividend yield at 1.75%, and still trade at a forward PE of only 21.22. So of course, this company does have a higher PE compared to the first three we've taken a look at, and this company has the highest Ford PE out of all six companies we're going to take a look at in today's video. But still, for a company like Qualcomm, who has a lot of high expected growth down the road, a 21.2 Ford PE, I believe, is still considered cheap for a company in their sector of the market. If we take a look next year, we're expecting 39% revenue growth and almost 70% earnings growth from Qualcomm. And this is really due to the fact that they have a nice partnership with Apple, one of the largest companies in the world, and a market leader in the tech space. And this deal has really turned around the company and will last over the next 12 to 18 months. So if they can hit these massive revenue expectations and earnings growth past 2021, I believe the share price will continue to grow and Qualcomm will provide a ton of forward upside. So although they are trading at a higher PE relative to the first three we've taken a look at, they also have some higher expected growth for the next few years down the road. And if we take a look at their current dividend, sitting at 1.75%, that's a nice average yield, but once again, very sustainable pay ratio of only 37% of their net income. So this is again, a company that can retain a ton of capital to grow the business, plus have a ton of capital left over to actually improve the dividend year over year. 
and they do a great job of growing, averaging 9% annual dividend growth from Qualcomm. So another business in a high, fast-growing sector that I believe will continue to grow, and I really do like Qualcomm and have it on the watch list for my personal portfolio as well. Now, the final two companies we're going to take a look at today have higher risks associated with them compared to the first four. These are smaller companies, aren't as stable as the first four, and do not provide investors with a dividend. So keep that in mind when looking at these two, but they're both considered cheap or undervalued at their current level. The number five in today's video is Ford. They currently trade below $9 per share, and I've seen a decline of over 6% over the past 12 months. The company was forced to suspend their dividend payment as of late, so they do not provide investors with a dividend, and currently trade a market cap at over $35 billion. They still are one of the largest car manufacturers in the world and are expecting some nice upside in 2021 and beyond with the new transition into electric vehicles. So right now Ford, the estimated fair value for this company sits at over $14.50 per share. They're ranked as four stars, which is considered undervalued. And if we take a look, represented at a 39% discount at this current level. So they're significantly undervalued from where Morningstar believes they could, should trade at over $14 per share. And if we take a look down the road, they're expecting to have their fully electric F-150 on the market by 2022. So in the next two years, we should expect a new influx of Ford F-150s hitting the market and hitting the streets very soon. And Ford is known for dominating the pickup truck space over the past few years, and the Ford F-150 continues to be the company's best seller. So if they can continue to dominate, and with the new transition into the EV space, get consumers into their Ford electric pickups, I think this company may see some potential upside and over the few years, if they can, you know, the release of the new Bronco, this new electric vehicle can really help bump up their top line. We may see that dividend reinstated for investors down the road. So Ford, another company to take a look at, trading at a lower valuation and very undervalued compared to what Morningstar believes the company should be trading at. Now, moving on to stock number six, we have ticker NLS, which is Nautilus, currently trading around $20 per share, this company operates within the fitness equipment space. It looks like they've seen a massive run up this year and shares have grown over a thousand percent, but if we take a longer term perspective picture on the company, over the past five years, shares have only grown 21% in total, and you can see they were actually trading around this price point five years ago before they saw a massive decline, and what we've seen over the past 12 months is a huge recovery back to this $20 level. And this is another very risky company, Although they do trade at a low forward PE of only 9.09, .09, they have a market cap at 630 million. So not even a billion dollar company yet, a very, very small company that you can see has had a lot of volatility over the past few years. So they are trading at a low valuation right now and they operate within the fitness and equipment space. So they provide both gym equipment for direct to consumer at home use and also provide equipment directly to gyms. And we all know in 2020, gyms have been shut down across the nation because of the pandemic, but hopefully their at-home consumer brands can really dominate. And they own some of the names such as Bowflex, Octane Fitness, and many more. And they're actually working on getting a subscription model for their intellectual and video products to consumers on the market. So now if we take a look at their income statement, we can really get a better picture of why the share price has been so volatile over the past few years. The company was sitting flat around 350 to 400 million dollars of revenue for four consecutive years. Then in 2019, the company saw a huge decline, dropping down around to 300 million of top line revenue. So from going around 400 down to 300, that 25% decline really led to that huge decrease in share price throughout 2019. But now over the past 12 months, we have seen a rebound and revenue has hit a record high over the past five years at $467 million. So of course this company operates within two different segments. They have direct to consumer gym and fitness equipment and they also have retail where they sell to gyms. We see a lot of gyms being shut down all across the nation right now. So direct to consumer and workout equipment, people have seen a huge demand and people want their equipment within their own homes. So it's safe, they're not with other people, no one else is using it and it's safe and sustainable for the long term. So their direct to consumer sales have increased and we have seen that bump up in revenue, which of course indicates why their share price has recovered back to pre-pandemic levels. And if we take a look at their bottom line, of course this is still a risky company, but they remain profitable around five of the past six years. So of course we saw the decline in revenue in 2019 and they went to post a $92 million net loss, 
which again really shows why the share price took such a hard decline. But before that, they were profitable, and now they've seen a nice bump up and remain profitable back over the past 12 months. So of course they operate within the fitness space, which is growing in popularity right now. People are at home, they have a lot of energy because they aren't moving around as much and want to buy some fitness, fitness equipment to work out from their own personal space. So another high risk company, I want to make that very clear with all these stocks. This is not financial advice. This is just an indication of me doing some research, going a quick overview of some companies and just sharing with you what I found. Always do your own research, speak to a qualified professional before you buy any different stock on the market. And in this video, we just went over some companies that are considered cheap or undervalued at their current level. These are some brands that may see some upside in 2021 and beyond. And a lot of them do provide investors with some nice dividend income. So thank you for watching. I'm the Gen Z Investor and see you in tomorrow's video.